Number 54. A fire hose has an inside diameter of 6.4 centimeters. Suppose such a hose carries a flow of 40 liters per second starting at a gauge pressure of 1.62 times 10 to the 6 newtons per square meter. The hose goes 10 meters up a ladder to a nozzle having an inside diameter of 3 centimeters. Calculate the Reynolds numbers for flow in the fire hose and nozzle to show that the flow in each must be turbulent. All right. So there's a lot going on in, in the picture. Now, what I would suggest here, and usually this is uh, the way to think through problems, um, start with the question. It says calculate the Reynolds number. So you think, well, do I know a formula for Reynolds number? And sure, we have it down here on the bottom right. So it tells us that the, that the Reynolds number uh, for a particular flow is going to be 2 multiplied by the density of that fluid that's flowing, multiplied by the velocity of that fluid that's flowing through the tube, multiplied by the radius of the tube, all divided by the viscosity of that fluid flowing through the tube. Now, we want to calculate the Reynolds numbers for both the fire hose and the nozzle. So let's first do the fire hose. I'll label that here sub F. So what that means is that I need to know the density of the fluid that's flowing through the fire hose. Well, that's water. The velocity of the flow, mm, they didn't tell us. The radius of the fire hose itself, that they told us, right? They told us the diameter, well, they told us the diameter at least. Okay, so what I did over here, if you notice, here's the radius. I took the diameter, converted that into meters, and then divided it by two to get the radius. And we also have to know the viscosity of the water, which we do know. So the only question really here is what's the velocity of the water in the fire hose, okay, in this portion of the, of the, of the fire hose. Um, so how do we find that? Well, what's given? So you might be looking and, oh, we got gauge pressure, we got this, we got that. Well, the big thing is that they gave us the flow rate. Okay, now you have to remember that the flow rate will be conserved, okay, assuming that there is no changes um, in terms of the tube, meaning that there's, you know, uh, let's say that the tube is continuous, let me say, that there is no, you know, cutouts for, let's say supplying something here, and then another cut out for supplying something there, then the flow rate through each of those tubes uh, can be different, all right? So as long as it's one continuous hose, uh, we then have the continuous flow rate. Now, the other assumption also is that, and it doesn't state this, but I, I'm gonna assume that that's the case. Um, it tells us the flow rate through the hose. It doesn't say that this is the flow rate with the nozzle not attached. Right, and it doesn't also, and it also doesn't tell us that this is the flow rate with the ho with the nozzle attached. It tells us neither. So I'm going to assume that this is the flow rate with the nozzle attached already. So whatever flow is flowing through the hose is also the same flow flowing through the nozzle. Because if this was the flow rate without the nozzle present, then you cannot assume that this will then be the flow rate through the fire hose and the nozzle when you put this nozzle on. Obviously, that makes sense, right? It's almost like pretend you had a hose, right? And you turn the spigot on and you, you know, let the hose, there was nothing on the end of the hose. You just let it run out, right? You, you're going to experience and realize a certain volume of water coming out of that hose per time. Then you put your thumb over the hose so that only a little bit of water comes out. What happens to the flow rate? Well, it goes down, right? Not as much water is coming out now. So that's the whole idea that if you change the conditions, so if you know the flow rate in one case, and then you put the nozzle on, this will not be the flow rate anymore. But if they told you the flow rate, assuming the nozzle is on already, then this will be the flow rate through all parts of the tube. Just like that hose example. Okay, as soon as you put your thumb over the hose, when the flow is then reduced, the flow is reduced at the point at which your thumb is and throughout the entire hose itself. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. So if, if that's my assumption here, which I'm going to do, as I've mentioned, uh, then the flow rate is 40 liters per second in all parts of the tube. Now that allows me to kind of bypass a lot of this other uh, mumbo jumbo, all right? Now, I, it could be given to you just for extraneous information to try to confuse you, but if these are the assumptions, then if I know the flow rate through the hose and I know the radius of the hose, I can calculate the velocity of the water through that hose. How? via this equation over here on the right hand side. So this is gonna be Q will equal the area multiplied by the average velocity. So to find the average velocity flowing through that portion of the uh, hose here, right, we're finding it through the hose, 
we need to know the uh, flow rate through the hose divided by the area of the hose. So now just make sure you get the right units, right? This is 40 liters per second. You know now to convert that into cubic meters, we got to divide that by 1,000. So to find the velocity through the hose, it would simply be, actually, you know what? We know these two variables essentially, right? The area though, remember I can just expand so that that's going to be pi times the radius of the hose squared, and we do know that. So now what I'm going to do is just do this algebraically. I'm going to take this, drop it on in there, and then rewrite the formula now. And this would be the complete formula. Density of the water times now the flow rate through the hose divided by pi times then the radius of the hose squared multiplied by the radius of the hose. I realize I'm using F and now I'm using H. Um, whoops, there, um, this is fire hose, this is hose now. I don't know why. I'll put a FH, all right? FH, this is FH, FH, look at that, FH, okay. Then all divided then by the viscosity there of the water, okay? And this is the density of the water. So now we can do a quick simplification, right? This down here is squared. I know it's a little messy, but what are you gonna do? That cancels too, and now we can plug in the values. So the Reynolds number for the fire hose will be equal to two multiplied by the density of the water, which we'll assume is fresh water, so that's 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. The flow rate through the hose was going to be 0 0.0400, right? Converting that into, or dividing that by 1,000, I should say. And then dividing that by pi, now multiplied by the radius of that hose, which we said was going to be 0 0.064 over 2. Great. And then divide that whole thing now by the uh, viscosity of water, which is 1 point, well, now it assumes, right, what temperature? Did they tell us a temperature? No, they didn't. So we have to assume a temperature, assume 20 degrees Celsius. That's usually the standard, okay? But doesn't necessarily have to be. So this is the viscosity in Pascal second. All right, the values are usually given in millipascal, so you got to do that conversion too. So just be careful, as you can see, a lot of conversions to be done. So you want to think about it in two parts. You want to think about well, what's the physics, right? What equations do I need to use? What's going on with the physics? And then after you figure that out, then you can do your conversions, or you do your conversions first, and then figure out the physics. It's best to kind of do one or the other first, especially when you're first learning it so that you don't overload yourself at one particular point in time trying to figure out, oh, I got to convert units and then, oh, wait, what's the physics like? What am I, you know, what equations? Think about them as two separate analyses, all right? Anyway, let's calculate. So we've got two times 1,000, then multiply by 0 0.04 divided now by, in parentheses, pi times 0 0.064 divided by two. Close those parentheses. One second, realize I have an extra parenthesis in there. Great, and then divide that now by 1.002 times 10 to the minus three. And here's the Reynolds number through the hose. So this is gonna be 7.94 about, 7.94 times 10 to the, what do we got? Three, four, five, five. There's no units here. So this is the number. Now, this is about right, 794,000. And we know that when the Reynolds number um, is greater than, now different texts say slightly different things, so you just gotta be careful. It's usually whenever it's greater than 3,000, we would consider the flow turbulent, okay? If it's less than um, 2,000, then we would consider, then we would consider this to be laminar, okay? Uh, yeah. Hopefully you can read that. All right. Um, some say, though, the, for turbulent, it has to be more than 4,000. So again, just you know, double check that. Now, we did this for the fire hose. Now we got to do it for the nozzle. So the same analysis applies. Okay, same things are going to hold. I already said that the flow rate through the nozzle now, because I'm assuming that this was the flow rate given with the nozzle on it, is going to be the same. Now, if that's the same, then in terms of this calculation, the only thing that will change is the radius right here. So instead of this value now in your calculation, you're going to be using this value. They told us the diameter in centimeters, so I converted that into meters and then divided it by two to get the radius, okay? So now this number in here will become 0 0.03 over two. So all you gotta do now, redo the calculation, 
and just plug in that value instead of the 0.06, uh, 0 0.064 over 2. So it's going to be 2 multiplied by 1,000, all right, multiplied by 0 0.04, divided now by, in parentheses, pi times 0 0.03 over 2. Get your value, and then divide that now by 1.002 times 10 raised to the minus 3. And here we get a value now, so this is going to be the Reynolds number for the nozzle. And it's 1.69 about, 1.69 times 10 to the uh, 6, right? And that's now about 1.6 million. So I think that's a little greater than whatever, you know, numbers we're using up there. Uh, so as you can see, both flows are turbulent, all right? Um, now, if you had to, you know, try this problem, if you can, see if you can, all right? It's a challenging problem. See if you can figure out the problem if this is the flow rate without the nozzle attached. All right, and then remember when you attach the nozzle, this would no longer be the flow rate. So you might have to be thinking about some other formulas possibly. You might not be able to solve it, but I want you to try it. All right, see, if, see where you get. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care.